立法會主席。The President。Good morning. We continue with the German debate, Mr. Tang Kapu. Thank you, President. Well, on the return of Hong Kong to the motherland, the um, Chinese Chinese flag was raised, and um, is um, an actually an you know beatable feat and an historical achievement with this return. But then in recent years, we've seen you know uh, uh, setbacks in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong people start to wonder about their future. Many mainland compatriots are concerned too that uh, Hong Kong will drag them down. And still, at this important time, uh, President Xi Jinping came to Hong Kong to deliver this important address. We are very much grateful to them. We are encouraged by that. Now, uh, he um, spelled out the three uh, achievements of Hong Kong. The first, that uh, we have served as the window to the opening up and reform of Hong Kong. We've made an immense contribution. Secondly, there's been overall uh, development in society and is recognized internationally. And thirdly, Hong Kong's become Hong Kong people become the masters of Hong Kong, and that started the process of uh, democratization. So the uh, presidency that uh, this is uh, where these achievements will make Hong Kong people have confidence is what is important is that we uh, faithfully implement one country two systems. How do we ensure that there is faithful implementation one country two systems? This presidency um, proposed for us, and so all people in Hong Kong need to. Um, actively understand what is one country two systems. We have to fully implement one country two systems. We have to um, uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing the SAO's high degree of autonomy. We must ensure Hong Kong is administered by pat patriots, and we must maintain Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages. So the the uh, more um, robust one country is, the stronger two the two systems. So implementing um, Patriots administering Hong Kong is done by improving the electoral system. Now we have uh, different uh, people from different sector with different views, but we uh, agree to disagree. And then we also um, give our views, uh, um, are able to give our advice to the government. And then, then the four expectations raised by presidency as well that we must um, strengthen. Um, governance and uh, create impetus for growth, and also we need to address uh, people's uh, livelihood issues together, and then we, then we must safeguard uh, harmony and stability. So these are the four requirements of the new governing team. If uh, Hong Kong is governed well, and then one country and two systems uh, ro remain ro robust, Definitely, that will uh, make, help us to make contribution to the country, and also there will be plenty of room for development by young people. Uh, the dreams of young people are the dreams of Hong Kong and China. Now, I have been inspired by President Xi. I represent uh, Kowloon East, and so I have a Kowloon East dream as well. I would uh, suggest that the government should uh, develop the Kowloon East Kowloon um, business uh, uh, central business district into a um, culture and tourism center. So we could uh, then they will they will allow us the chance to join RCEP, and then there should be um, district development with different um, um, themes, and then um, there will be more development opportunities for people in the East Kowloon, you know, um, and then if we look at the Asian countries, they have diversified backgrounds and cultural um, backgrounds, and then. Um, if say, for instance, uh, Indonesia and other Islamic countries, they have immense potential for development as world recognized. And, but then few young people know about um, the Islamic culture and they, are not, they don't care much about it either. So would our education system encourage our young people to learn more about uh, different cultures around the world. That's why I would propose uh, linking East Kowloon to a ASEAN countries. Why? Because East Kowloon has um, the religious background um, representing Chinese culture. There are also um, ex-quality cultural spots and tourism facilities there. And then it's in East Kowloon, for uh, the past decade and so on, there are 
um, you know, entrepreneurs uh, who are enterprising. So Hong Kong is the gateway to China, and we this is our unique advantage. So we need to cherish this uh, advantage. And that this is the unique advantage of Hong Kong, and so that's our mission. So for all patriots uh, in Hong Kong here, I hope we will all work together for the good of the country. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Lau. Now, uh, the 1st of July this year, uh, they served the both celebration. First is the 25th anniversary of our return to mainland. Second uh, is the inaugural ceremony for the new governing team. I'm very much grateful to President Xi Jinping for coming to Hong Kong in person to attend the celebration ceremony for the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the mainland, as well as the inaugural ceremony of the 6th um, um, Hong Kong SAR government. And he delivered an important address that showed how much he cares about the people of Hong Kong. I'm grateful to Ms. Star Lee for moving this German motion so this council could uh, learn, um, have deep learning and dis the discussion about the important address of presidency. Presidency has raised uh, four must and four expectations. Uh, for four must, very concisely, sum up the experience of one country, two systems in the past 25 years. The first must is uh, we must fully and faithfully implement the principle one country, two systems that shows that uh, one country, two systems is to totally unprecedented and there's no reason to change it. We should um, adhere to it in the long run. Then the second must is we must uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing the SAR's high degree of autonomy. The third, we must ensure that Hong Kong is administered by patriots. So um, the President Xi has given us guidance uh, in terms of theory and action to take. And the fourth must is we must maintain Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages. So that's um, clear support for Hong Kong to consolidate its status as an international financial and uh, shipping center. And then we must also keep the common law system and uh, boost the confidence of investors in Hong Kong. I learned from these four must that uh, they are actually interlinked. So they are a whole and they are robust. And then Ms. Presidency also raises four expectations. So we and so we know better our direction and now uh, uh, one of the expectations about safeguarding harmony and stability together that uh, highlights the importance of national security. At the same time, um, he expects us to address the uh, livelihood issues. In particular, he shows concern about um, livelihood issues such as housing and land supply and the uh, development opportunities for young people. These are issues that the previous governments could not address. So for this new term of government, they need to have a new thinking and then they should bring a sense of well-being for to the people of Hong Kong on main, ensuring national security. The SL government must, must uh, legislate for Article 23 of the Basic Law as soon as possible and they must uh, make a clear explanations to the international community because we don't want anyone to give our false information taking this opportunity to discredit Hong Kong. On land and housing supply, I'm glad to see that uh, Mr. Lee, John Lee has uh, undertaken to proceed with the development of the northern metropolis. I hope the new governing team will be able to streamline the uh, process for the um, uh, land and housing development, and then they will also deal with some um, uh, Chou Tong land, uh, uh, green belt, and other issues, so that more land could be released for housing de development and boosting housing supply. Finally, on youth development, President C points out that if young people prosper, then Hong Kong will pro thrive, prosper. If uh, um, young people uh, have development, then Hong Kong will develop. And also, Hong Kong will have a bright future only when these young people have good career prospects. So I believe the SL government needs to do more on youth affairs. Uh, they have to step up um, national, um, national education for young people so they have the right um, um, values. And then Hong Kong people should, young people should also learn more about national development and they could be involved in uh, such development and the development of GBA and that will help to boost their upward mobility.
Now, Hong Kong has restored order from chaos, and we are in a critical stage of moving towards uh, uh, more prosperity. So under the leadership of Mr. John Lee, I hope the new government team will fully implement the implement important address of President Xi, and that together we could uh, leverage on the advantage of one country, two systems, and better integrate into national development that will ensure long-term prosperity and stability. Thank you. Mr. Chen Pulang, thank you. At the um, celebration ceremony for the 25th anniversary of uh, Hong Kong's return to mainland, as well as the inaugural ceremony, ceremony of the sixth uh, SA term SAL government, uh, he's raised uh, four of us and four expectations. This is definitely the blueprint for governance for uh, Hong Kong SAL. So that's why uh, we need to monitor the um, government to make sure it implements the important address and achieve good governance. That is squarely our duty. Now, we uh, need to have a national vision. Uh, the government needs to have national vision and uh, to understand public sentiments. And more importantly, we need to consider the direction of governance and the way of governance. The uh, presidency pointed out in the address that uh, he would like the SRO government to um, um, make, put right the relations between the government and the market. Now, in the past, the government has always uh, adopted the attitude of a small government and a big market, and then it has positive non-intervention policy. The SL government needs to review these two policies and philosophies because um, um, we need to be able to respond swiftly to external changes. Now, the SL government has to um, make clear the position of Hong Kong and, um, and also defines uh, the impetus for development. Now, Hong Kong has unique advantages, uh, provided important support to the development of the mainland economy. So the Hong, Kong, Hong Kong needs to keep a free and open market, and we need to keep the common law system, and then we need to make sure there is um, close connection with the mainland as well as the international community. In terms of consolidating our status as an international financial aviation shipping or um, uh, INT center, we need to seize upon uh, market opportunities uh, arising from the mainland. So that um, in terms of um, infrastructure, culture and arts and so on, we will serve as the bridge between the East and the West and then Hong Kong could further en enhance its role as the um, a window to the mainland. Now, the President see that the people aspire for a good life and that should be the goal uh, that we strive for. So um, he touched upon housing, healthcare and other issues. He says the government, SL government must learn about the people's aspirations and the sentiments. Uh, now, uh, th there is a need for that determination to address these uh, issues. and. No, for members and uh, officials, we need to have cl foster closer co uh, com connection with the people so we could uh, keep tap on their sentiments and their needs, and then together we could work to address their needs. Now, five years ago, at the 20th uh, anniversary of uh, Hong Kong's return to the mainland, President said in his visit that uh, we stability uh, prevails over everything. Without stability and harmony, there's no way we could develop uh, the economy. And uh, this time, Mr. President Xi pointed again, there is need for harmony for a family to thrive. So that's why he um, insists it's important that we implement one country, two systems, and have a patriot administering Hong Kong together. We should work to ensure the stability and harmony in Hong Kong. That's uh, just the obligation of every citizen here. Now, it's been 25 years. Uh, um, we've been through um, turbulences, and now we've risen from the ashes. So one country, two systems is the best solution for Hong Kong. And it is also the best um, institution for ensuring stability and prosperity for Hong Kong after the return to the mainland. So I'm sure the SL government will um, not sway from this principle. And then I'm sure that the next five years, with the full support of the country, and then with um, effective governance in S the SAL, and then with the uh, um, joint effort of all members of the community, Hong Kong will see a better future. Thank you. Mr. Benson, look. Thank you. President Xi, even through the pandemic and the typhoon, 
um, overcome all obstacles to attend the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China on July 1st and to attend the inaugural ceremony. On June 30th, when President Xi arrived, he gave a brief speech saying that his heart has been with Hong Kong and he has been thinking of Hong Kong all the time. On July 1st, President Xi made an address and raised four must and four uh, expectations, and he set out a strong principle and direction for the future development on Hong Kong. And that is a very important milestone for Hong Kong. First of all, in his address, he said that the one country, two systems principle must prevail and it must not change or vacillate. This is actually a a good news for the business sector and also for the people of Hong Kong. And he said that there, in his expectation that Hong Kong should further improve its governments. LegCo members must also remember this, that we should provide suggestions to the government and that we must make better development plans and after the improvement of the election system to assist the government in improving its governance. For the business sector, it is mentioned that there should be a better connection between the different sectors and the government. And of course, we must continue liaising with the business sector to continue to work together to overcome social challenges. In the Q&A session yesterday, our chief executive also mentioned speeding up the supply of housing. And this is actually a very good example of the way forward. Uh, uh, the uh, private sector and public sector will work together on PPP to resolve social issues together. And in the second must, President Xi talked about upholding the central government's overall jurisdiction and to uh, work together with the 14th five-year plan. I believe that this is something we should take the initiative. I suggest that a professional sectors, young people, and SMEs must participate in the GBA development and also to ensure its development. For young people, President Xi has also made clear that we must help young people to resolve difficulties in studies, employment, entrepreneurship, and purchasing of housing. I believe that we should encourage them to join in the GBA development because that is also a very a good a method of helping them. We must cultivate a sense of national pride in young people and to better understand the GBA. We must help them to um, enhance um, their uh, circle of um, friends in the GBA area to help them to study and make friends and move over there. We must ensure that they have good career prospects so that they can also join in the development of Hong Kong and to build their uh, careers. President Xi also talked about regardless of uh, careers and beliefs, as long as uh, they, as people love Hong Kong and uphold one country, two systems principle, then it is actually um, will help with the steady growth of Hong Kong. I believe that as long as we are all um, under the rule of law and we all uh, love Hong Kong, we'll be able to contribute to society. The people of Hong Kong hope that they could actually have a better life and that there will be more decent housing, more opportunities, and better education for children and better care in their twilight years. So we really should address people's concerns and difficulties in daily life. I call upon people from different sectors to stand together to contribute to society, to be united, and to ensure that we'll be able to have good governance in Hong Kong so that we'll be able to uphold the principle of one country, two systems, and Hong Kong will be able to share the glory of rejuvenation together with the people of the rest of the country. Professor Lao Chi Pang. Thank you, President. 
I support Sari Lee's adjournment motion. President Xi gave an important address marking the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China. He, on one hand, talked about the success in the handover and also talked about the important page of Hong Kong's uh, chapter in the country after the handover. So this is a very important part of history. President Xi is actually um, steadying our minds in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very precious to the country, and we can alleviate all concerns we may have for the future of Hong Kong. Even though President Xi gave many positive views and comments, he also uh, set out some expectations for the Hong Kong government. He listed out four must and expectations. Many colleagues have already talked about the must-dos that President Xi talked about. He not only gave the direction, but also gave suggestions on how to resolve the issues. Therefore, he in detail mentioned the most important part of handover, which is the guiding principle of one country, two systems, to ensure that we would continue with this principle. And then he talked about the upholding of the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing the SAR's high degree of autonomy. The third point is something that is of concern to everyone, which is to ensure that Hong Kong be administered by patriots. President Xi talked about implementing this principle and that we have seen from the improving of the electoral system. And we are already able to achieve Hong Kong be admitted by patriots. And lastly, he pointed out the important status and advantage of Hong Kong on whether there would be unfavorable changes. He made a commitment that the central government will ensure that Hong Kong maintain its distinctive status and advantages. These four points could be seen as important missions and tasks for the people and government of Hong Kong. And we would see outcomes from these four points. And thus, he gave us four expectations, which is also important work of the new government, such as improving its governance, creating strong impetus for growth, addressing people's concerns and difficulties, and working together to safeguard harmony and stability. So President Yu's improve, con create, add address, and safeguard to show his passion for these expectations. But then he used the word expectation instead of outcome to show his hope for the government. So he is leaving this autonomy to Hong Kong. I so submit, President. Mr. Lai Tong Kok, President. On July 1st, President Xi gave an address on the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return, and his speech differs from previous speeches. This time, we could say that President Xi has made it very clear and obvious in his speech. After 
listening to his speech, I analyzed the address and found that we could actually um, go back to 1990s on April 4th um, when he gave a report. He said that there are two musts. First, to uh, continue with the principle of one country, two systems, and to uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy. And actually, this is actually the main principle under the central government for all these years. In Article Basic 1 of a Basic Law, it is listed very clearly that the that Hong Kong is actually um, a neighbor part of China. Whereas we look back at the social unrest in 2019, we would understand how important this basic principle is. Some people may query uh, if this is something newly added. Actually, uh, we could actually compare it to the basic law in Article 12 t Article 2012 of the basic law. It said that if we do not have a governance, uh, then we're, then why would we say that uh, we are actually directly under the central government? And then in Article 15, uh, we see that uh, Hong Kong's uh, core va core is actually appointed core officials appointed by the central government and so um, there is of course an autonomy in Hong Kong some people are worried about the 50 years after the handover and they're worried that um, by 2047 there would be unexpected changes in Hong Kong and that there would be uh, foreign interference uh, trying to make news out of it but then President Xi very clearly stated that there is actually no uh, there um there wouldn't be any change uh, for the principle of one country two systems and it will maintain so everyone can be rest assured that hong kong will continue with its current development article 5 of the basic law also said that uh, we must ensure that uh, the social system policy policy shall not be practiced in the Hong Kong SAR region, and the previous capitalist system shall remain unchanged for fifty years. But it does not say that it will actually ch be changed after fifty years. So as long as we um, continue our way forward, so it will be much similar to how we have been operating in the past few years. I believe that there are also some parts that we have already paved our way forward in the right path. So we should have a check of balance between the administrative and legislature. So you can see that in the new legislature, we have already expedited our um, working speed. And for the relaxing of social distancing measures and on whether those under quarantine would actually enjoy um, sick leave, we have already discussed with the government and made changes. We are going to work more closely with the government to try to improve our governments. Thank you. Mr. Robert Lee. Thank you, President. I thank Ms. Starry Lee to move the adjournment motion. On the 1st of July, the President, Xi Jinping, attended the meeting to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the um, establishment of the Hong Kong SAR and the inaugural cer ceremony of the six term government. He emphasized in his ad address that we have been subject to challenges over the years and we have been been over been able to overcome the different challenges and this shows that the um, one country two systems is a good policy and we must adhere to it in the long run he raised four musts and four expectations it the one country two systems um 
safeguards the countries and Hong Kong's fundamental interests. We have a unique uh, status and we can develop ourselves into an international shipping center. He has also raised suggestions on how to improve the economy in the future. In strength, creating strong imp impetus for growth, the government will fully support Hong Kong in leveraging on its opportunities. We should integrate ourselves into the national development, the Belt and Road Initiative, and GBA development. In the 14th Five-Year Plan, it is stated clearly that Hong Kong should be supported to, to be developed into an um, offshore and based center and international asset management center. So the Hong Kong should also should strive to diversify our um, capital market we should develop our security smack market and also diversify into other areas, including precious metals, uh, bonds, funds, and other new areas. We must uh, strengthen our status as an international financial center, and we should work together with the local and mainland counterparts, the different uh, exchanges, and also various stakeholders. Closer ties should be forged among all these parties. We must work um, to help different enterprises integrate into the national development, and the SAO government government should also help SMEs and incorporate their views so as to improve our business environment. In terms of international liaison, we must review our core competitiveness all the time. Um, after the, we implement the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong, our governance uh, efficacy should be improved considerably. On long-standing problems, the SAO government uh, should make breakthroughs. Under the country's opening up and reform, Hong Kong will continue to play an important role as a bridge and a window and would make contributions to the speedy development of China. I will work hard to um, meet with the four expectations raised by President Xi, and I will work together with the governing team to um, help Hong Kong move from a disarray into um, governance and from governance to greater prosperity. Mr. Kenneth Fock, uh, on the 30th of June and the 1st of July, uh, President Xi uh, attended the ceremonies despite the epidemic. It shows that he has a great concern and a care for Hong Kong people. In his important speech, he said that the one country, two systems is full of vitality and is successful. It has undergone repeated tests. And President Xi said that uh, the system will be adhered in the long run. So he has given a shot in the arm to the international visitors. Now, in the next five years will be a key period for us to move from governance to great prosperity. We must. Um, implement policies uh, based on the four months and four um, expectations. Hong Kong is an international exchange center, and we are an IP trading center, and we are exporting uh, culture, and this will be an important work area for us. So I look forward to the SR government uh, doing more on the three fronts below. First, I think the SAR government must change its mindset, leverage on market forces, try to commercialize the arts and culture industry. And in the past, the government, in promoting the arts and culture industry development, has been moving rather slowly, and and the relevant laws have been very outdated. And the cult, cult, creative and cultural industry, the value added in the GDP in the past 10 years has not risen at all. And that's mainly because in the past 10 years, we don't have a clear um, cultural and creative industry policy. And the government and the society as a whole have not attached sufficient importance to the industry. So the CSTB must conduct a study and then come up with appropriate um, measures to proactively plan for the, the the overall development of the industry. And the government must also change its uh, present mentality. President Xi said that we should, um, the government should uh, try to work together with an efficient uh, market. There should be interdepartmental inter collaboration, and there should be commercialization or industrialization of the sector. But 
not every sector um, can go that direction. So we must uh, achieve a right balance here. Now, second, we must uh, help enterprises to integrate into the national development. We must tell a good story about Hong Kong and the nation. Hong Kong has always been the bridge linking the world and China. And we must uh, continue to exploit that advantage. We should also integrate into the national development. In uh, Hong Kong, uh, arts groups have met with difficulties in going to the GBA, for example, in the use of venue and qualifications, uh, accreditation and so on, recognition and so on. And in, say, st uh, staging major events, well, on that front, we have been overtaken by neighboring countries like uh, South Korea and Singapore. And the, SA, and the chief executive said that he hopes that Hong Kong can organize more such events. So the government should make more efforts to help enterprises integrate into the national development. We must uh, leverage on events like films and sports events uh, to help the mainlanders to uh, get in touch with our, our culture. At the CPPCC, I also raised this opinion. The ETOs of Hong Kong should do more to uh, collaborate with some Chinese culture centers so that we can together go global and tell a good China story. And then we should also uh, provide opportunities for the young people to move upwards um, socially through culture. Now, in terms of um, the young people moving upwards socially, there have been a pr lot of problems. There has been a, uh, a unprecedented high level of poor uh, population among the young people. So the cultural industry can help them. And I hope that the um, task force addressing intergeneration uh, poverty uh, can incorporate uh, that the element I mentioned in their work. The government should nurture more talents, especially in relation to art technology. Um, and I, at the same time, I hope that we can uh, enhance the level of appreciation among the young people in that society towards uh, the arts and culture industry. And that can help to promote the long-term development of the industry. Mrs. Regina Yip. Thank you, President. This time, President C, fearless of the epidemic risk and the typhoon threat, has made an important speech in Hong Kong when he came here. Well, it's, uh, his speech carried a lot of significance. He mentioned uh, some points which were mentioned five years ago. He uh, said that the central government will uh, persists with one country, two systems principle, and make sure that it will not deviate from his um, original aspiration. And five years ago, he also reminded that we should be loving the country and we should be committed. As government officials, we should be proactive in our work. Now, it's been five years on, and this time, President Xi had made um, a more important speech, and he had made a conclusion of how we performed over the past five years and how we have triumphed over crisis. I would like to mention three points here. Well, as mentioned by many other members, uh, presidency had brought some piece of uh, a good a piece of good news to us, and that the one country two systems will be adhered in the long run. He's. He said that we, sh um, the government, will not as waver in the stance. It has been repeatedly proven to be successful. It meets the fundamental interest of the country, Hong Kong and Macau, and it has the support of the 1.4 million billion people in China. It has the unanimous endorsement um, of Hong Kong people and has gained international recognition. So there is no reason to change the system. Now some Hong Kong people were worried that 2047 will put a stop to the one country, two systems. That worries can be allayed. And the second point, I'm delighted to hear about this. Um, President C um, affirms uh, the contribution made by Hong Kong towards the country's uh, reform and opening up. At the outset, he said after the reunification, uh, he said the Hong Kong can has played a very good bridge <laughs> uh, 
and window uh, to linking China and the world. And it has made irreplaceable contribution in that regard. So this is a good compliment. And he reminds us that we should integrate into the national development and the national strategies, and we should remain uh, open and free. And we should Um, play an even more crucial role in the further opening up of China. We should uh, continue to refine our uh, systems and regimes. And the stage for Hong Kong compa compatriots to start business and achieve success has become increasingly broader. So it has given us a shot in the arm. And if we can better integrate with the national development, so we can have a broader, uh, a, um, a broader stage to develop our potential. Well, there are so many good sayings in his uh, speech. Many fellow members have talked about the four musts and four expectations. In the interest of time, I would like to uh, talk about the, the uh, four points. The fourth point. He said that we should work together to safeguard harmony and stability. And he sometimes he said uh, compatriots, and sometimes he said um, uh, friends and um, residents. And so the letter should cover non-ethnic Chinese people in Hong Kong. So if well, irrespective of your profession and your beliefs, as long as you love Hong Kong and China and you abide by the basic law and the constitution, you can make a contribution and be a positive force in Hong Kong. And we, he hopes that um, all Hong Kong compatriots can vigorously promote the mainstream values that are centered on the love of our country and love of Hong Kong. And President Xi hopes that we can uh, stay harmonious because harmony is the, in the family it brings success to everything. So everyone in Hong Kong uh, can play a part. Mr. Edmund Wong, President. Now, uh, for those who be, uh, enjoy the benefits coming from the um, um, community, they must also share the uh, the worries and work for the people. So this is to um, tell the SL government and 86 members in here and all those who are in public offices. So since we are in public offices, we have power, so we must exercise our powers to address the issues of the public so we we could um, uh, work for, for their best interests um, and address the pressing issues. So that's the reason why I um, um, ran in the election for this uh, office. Now, uh, on health care, um, uh, elderly care and education issues, and there are many issues that need to be resolved. But then before that, first, uh, we need to consider where the resources come from. Now, uh, money doesn't fall from the sky. And in Hong Kong, we lack natural resources. So we have to rely on uh, the people of Hong Kong to work together to develop the economy. And then we'll have the resources to resolve the various um, social issues. In the past 25 years, the, there's been too much. Uh, the, the list council and the society and the community have been too much politicized. So we couldn't focus on economic development. We've wasted much time. Now we must learn from our past mistake. So that's why I look forward to the new government led by Mr. John Lee, and also to uh, uh, for, um, good interaction between the government and this council, which is now um, um, filled by patriots. So together we could uh, strengthen economic cooperation with mainland and catch up with lost time. The uh, presidency also stressed that the central government um, uh, cherishes very much the distinct uh, advantages of Hong Kong, and they want us to keep these advantages. Hong Kong is backed by the mainland, and then we have one country, two systems, and then uh, we there are immense development opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. As long as Hong Kong keeps its status as an international financial uh, shipping center and trade center, and then um, if people all devote their effort to developing our economy, then Hong Kong certainly will see great success. 
Now we need to further uh, reform our taxation system. That is an important point in um, promoting economic development. A um, simple uh, and efficient taxation regime will bring talents to Hong Kong and then will um, inject in impetus in our economic development. So we have a low and simple taxation system that is our advantage, but then um, there are various um, tax um, regulation, um, inter international tax regulation, so um, it's under threat. I hope the new t um, government will review our taxation regime to see whether there is room for further enhancement. Uh, so while we meet international requirements, we could also um, cons maintain our distinct advantages. There should, uh, and, and if the government proposes new tax concessions, it should be more um, uh, and aggressive so that we could uh, uh, make it our tax system more appealing to foreign capital and talents. Finally, I hope um, everyone in the community, in this council, in the government, will work together to develop our economy so Hong Kong people will again have a sense of happiness and a sense of pride as uh, Hong Kongers. Mr. Peter Xiu. Now, Mr. Pre uh, President Xi came to Hong Kong to celebrate the 25th anniversary. I was touched and I was grateful, as many Hong Kongers were, uh, because the typhoon was approaching and then we still had the epidemic. Still, President Xi chose to come here in person to deliver this important address. It shows that he cares very much about uh, the, uh, Hong Kong compatriots. Now, President Xi say, says that the one country, two system so principle is well tested. Uh, it's a good system. There's no reason to change it. Now, we've been through um, the um, um, international financial crisis and various uh, setbacks over the years. Still, we are able to um, prevail. So this is uh, now uh, the midway point for the implementation of one country, two systems. For investors and people of Hong Kong, many have concerns about 2047 um, and so on. But then President Xi says that um, the one country, two systems system could um, continue so that uh, we'll remove all the worries. With the support of the country and under one country, two systems, Hong Kong has always remained competitive. We are at, uh, you know, at, we rank top in many indexes. For example, um, global competitiveness, we are ranked second, and then um, we are ranked third in other indexes, such as um, as an international financial center and so on. So it shows that um, although Hong Kong is a small city, we have uh, made great achievements. Now, I don't have enough time, so I cannot really speak on the four must and the four expectations raised by President Xi. I can only focus on two areas. One, about maintaining Hong Kong's maintain a distinct, um, unique and distinct advantages and status. Now, he uh, points out uh, wh why we have this distinct advantage, because we are backed by the country and we face the world, and then our interests are aligned with those of the country. So trying to show people, central government and uh, Hong Kong people both cherish uh, this advantage. Now, Hong Kong has been a free and open society with a uh, common law jurisdiction and a simple and low tax uh, taxation system. So we are able to bring in talents and businesses from all over the world. With um, opening up and reform of the country, Hong Kong has become the southern gateway uh, of the country. So we've uh, served the function of a bridge and window between the country and the rest of the world. So on this basis, Hong Kong will continue to uh, consolidate its status as an international financial shipping and trade center. And then we'll keep the common law restriction. We'll also uh, foster better connection with the world. And then presidency would like Hong Kong to um, have stronger impetus. Now, in the past, um, many have complained that we uh, have um, we don't have diversity in our economic structures. That's why our growth has been slow. So the presidency said that we should seize upon the opportunities of the development of the country, and then and also uh, the opportunities presented by the Greater Bay Area Development and the Belt and Road Initiative. And then we could also foster closer exchanges and cooperation with the rest of the world. And then we could bring uh, people to come here to set up businesses. Now, Hong Kong is close to the Greater Bay Area. That's where we have an advantage. So uh, there is a population of 80 million people in Greater Bay Area. So the market is t uh, size is 10 times that of Hong Kong. And so um, it will, uh, businesses go there to uh, expand the market. 
and then um, we could also work with uh, uh, we could uh, work together with GBA and to turn that in turn ourselves into an international innovation and technology center, and that will be a new growth uh, point for Hong Kong. The economy it will also benefit national development. Now, I, we hope Hong Kong will leverage on this advantage of one country, two systems, and then in the dual circulation of national development, then Hong Kong could play its role as the um, intermediary, and we could also um, seize upon the um, immense market opportunities um, you know, uh, with uh, the GBA as our entry point. The national development cannot be stopped. So as a member of the country, Hong Kong should play a role too. Now, the country is um, um, striving for uh, Chinese re uh, rejuvenation. So Hong Kong should make a contribution there. Thank you. Dr. Dennis Lam. Thank you. Now, Emmett, um, the, the rain and storm, and uh, the epidemic presidency came in person to um, preside over the inaugural ceremony, and uh, he also delivered important address, it, which carries great significance. The July first, the July first important um, address of presidency sets the direction. So we need to uh, fully learn about this address uh, to start a new chapter of good governance. I would like to make the following points: one, we must uh, ensure there are patriots administering Hong Kong, because in the important address, presidency pointed out that. Uh, we, there is a need to make sure that uh, governance is firmly, uh, that, that uh, um, uh, the government is firmly in the hands of patriots. Uh, it, we will not sway from this uh, position. We need to safeguard our governance, and that is, uh, this is essential uh, requirement for Hong Kong's long-term stability and prosperity. So we need to have um, uh, patriots gov governing Hong Kong, and they will then serve the interests of the people of Hong Kong, and then they will uh, safeguard the uh, interests of the country in Hong Kong. Second point, civil servants are an important st uh, stabilizing force for long-term prosperity and stability of Hong Kong. So uh, for civil servants, we must also make sure they are, they are patriots. So we need to step up uh, and management and training of civil servants. Civil servants need to learn more about the country, and then to get they should work together with the governing team and serve the public better. More uh, equally important, there is need to enhance efficiency of decision making so that um, decisions are made um, uh, swiftly and then followed up on and acted upon. Now we ha have to address. Uh, presidency say that we have to address the. Um, people's uh, concerns and difficulties in daily life. Well, that is in line with uh, Mr. John Lee's uh, governance philosophy of being result-oriented. President C says that um, uh, the aspiration of the people for a better life is uh, our goal. So, so has, she, she, he said that Hong Kong people want to uh, have uh, more room um, and then more opportunity for development and so on, and then for young old people, there should be better care. So th these, um, you know, the way he puts it is uh, really uh, shows that he is uh, keeping tap of people's um, aspirations. So we need to make sure that we address the um, aspirations of the people, and there should be improvement of people's livelihoods so people have a better sense of happiness. And then uh, if to ensure good governance, we need to set the directions and move forward in a, uh, a step at a time. President, uh, Mr. John Lee said that he will resolve an issue each day. That means in a year he could resolve 365 issues. I think for now, of course, we need to um, control the epidemic when so we that we could resume quarantine travel with the mainland as soon as possible because this is of the greatest concern to the people of Hong Kong. It involves our economic development and also the interests of um, individual members of the public. Now, after I became a member, this is something I've been working on in the past six months uh, through the National People's Congress, Legislative Council, and so on. Um, I have. Um, uh, pro um, help to uh, propose the uh, various uh, that we should. Uh, um, I have done analysis on various issues such as the zero COVID policy and so on, and then together with a uh, hundred um, um, medical practitioners, 
both in Chinese and Western medicine, we formed this alliance to propose uh, um, Chinese Western integrated Chinese Western medicine treatment, and also we've helped with um, collecting, uh, uh, collecting and distributing resources. And in the past uh, six months, uh, I learned that it's hard to get anything done. But as John Lee pointed out, uh, we we may have many problems, but if we could solve one each day, then in uh, over a year we'll be able to solve many problems. And then now, oh. Um, and uh, with the new chapter of good governance, it's also about um, helping young people. Uh, because if people, uh, if Hong Kong will only develop, people, young people will thrive. This is what President Xi said. And uh, we look back in the past 25 years for youth work and student work, there is need to strengthen such work, in particular in terms of national education and um, fostering a sense of belonging. So we need to start at a young age. Thank you. Hi. Mr. Duncan Chu. Thank you, President. Last week, President Xi visited Hong Kong in two consecutive days and attended the inaugural ceremony of the sixth term of government and the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Hong Kong. So it shows that President Xi attaches huge importance to Hong Kong. In President Xi's address, he made it very clear to the whole world that Hong Kong, at its 25th anniversary, with the support of everyone, has been are very successful in upholding the one country, two systems principle. President Xi mentioned when he arrived Hong Kong that the one country, two systems principle is an unprecedented and very strong principle. And as long as we continue and maintain it, then we would secure a bright future for the region. President Xi's um, speech is actually a reassurance to Hong Kong and very straight to the point. The last 25 years in Hong Kong has been prosperous and the economic development status continues to thrive. And there is a freedom and a free market. And in the fourth must, he mentioned that we must maintain the um, distinctive status to keep the business environmental free, open, and regulated. This is actually a very important pillar of Hong Kong. Hong Kong's business environment will not change. Even though he's only here for uh, two days, President Xi visited Science Park, showing his um, passion uh, for uh, innovation. He visited a, um, a company and also looked into seven research projects. He also conducted exchanges with some of the um, experts. And he uh, told them that with this strong foundation, there would be a stronger future. And this is very encouraging words for the innovative and technological sector. Hong Kong, since its handover, has seen very new tries in technology. And it's only recently that we have seen some success, which is attributed to the central government's support. Hong Kong, in 2015, set up the ITB, and President Xi showed his support in Hong Kong becoming a a uh, high-tech center in 2019 under the GBA development plan. It also describes the role Hong Kong will play in terms of technology in the GBA. And in 2021, through the 14th five-year plan, it also supports Hong Kong to become an international innovative science and technology center. I am grateful to President Xi and the central government support for showing their support, allowing Hong Kong to nurture about 10 plus unicorns in Hong Kong in recent years. But we are still only in early days. There is still a lot of work to be done, as President Xi said, as long as we persist forward, we'll be able to see a better future. 
by visiting the science park, President Xi shows his staunch support for innovation technology, and we must ensure that we set up the high threshold and to work on upstream technological uh, industries and products, and then to go out into the world, and that will fully be able to show the competitiveness of Hong Kong. Hong Kong's uh, technological sector will continue this way forward, and we are going to contribute to the country's development as well. President Xi mentioned four expectations, and of course, uh, technology and innovation would be the part of the strong impetus for growth. We would, of course, make good use of our opportunities to work with the Greater Bay Area and the other plans and to help those full of dreams uh, to come to Hong Kong to continue their dreams, to unlock the enormous creativity and development potential of Hong Kong. I hope that the new government will also place these as important missions so that Hong Kong will become an international technological center so that we'll be able to contribute more for the country. Your time is up, Mr. Dennis Lang. Thank you, President. On July 1st, President Xi Jinping came in person to Hong Kong for the inaugural ceremony of the six-term government and also for the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China. Uh, we must all be grateful and to work together to build up our homeland. President Xi gave us a good sense of direction for the future in his address. He listed out four musts and four expectations that in the next five years would be most crucial for Hong Kong. In the past 25 years, Hong Kong has been going has been under the one country two systems principle and a high and enjoying a high degree of autonomy. Hong President Xi talked about young people thriving and that we must help young people in studies, employment, entrepreneurship and purchasing of housing. I hope that the government will do a bit more and also to uh, work more towards uh, um, national education. And education must start from young, and we must also work to become a technological center. Our chief executive attended LegCo yesterday for the Q&A session and mentioned setting up four task force. I suggest a Another task force be set up for national education and also on the learning of President Xi to fully implement the one country, two systems principle. In addition, Hong Kong people, other than most concerned with housing, is concerned with med with um, medical as well. So I hope that a task force could also be set up to resolve these issues in Hong Kong on health and medical. People in Hong Kong feel that um, there are not, that these services are inadequate and even civil servants are not enjoying medical benefits as deserved. The public is always thinking that the civil servants have taken away their medical benefits, but actually the benefits provided to civil servants should be separated. Otherwise, it would be unfair to civil servants. President Xi also uh, said in his speech that uh, those enjoying benefits and joy of all people should also share their burdens and concerns. Uh, if this is actually a positive, and we then, as the chief executive said, then we must just list out everything clearly. The Secretary for uh, Home and Youth Affairs, Ms. Alice Mack, has been visiting residents in Tin Shui Man for many years. So this is the way how she has been helping with society. And we see that the new government will be looking towards working with the FTU. We are going to continue with our the same direction. We hope that when the government officials uh, visit uh, people, 
uh, we would just leave the area as it is and not try to clean it up before the government officials arrive. Otherwise, that would be very harsh on the cleaners. I think that the government should try to become a good government. I support all the directions we have taken since the improvement of the electoral system. We have gone over ride turbulences, and in the next five years, whether it be administration, legislative, and judiciary, as long as we can work together, we will be able to do better the future. I hope that um, our chief executive, Mr. John Lee, will really be results-oriented and to open a new chapter for Hong Kong. President, I support Sari Lee's adjournment motion. I so submit. Dr. Junius Ho. Thank you, President. I support your adjournment motion on uh, discussing the important address made by President Xi on July 1st. He suggested four must and four expectations. The four must revolve around the basic law because first, he stated that we must fully and fully implement the principle of one country, two systems, which is under the basic law. And ever since July 1st of 1997, the basic law has been the um, main principle law in Hong Kong. So to fully implement the principle of one country, two systems is a complete system to govern Hong Kong. In Article 12, as another member had mentioned, that uh, Hong Kong shall enjoy a high degree of autonomy and come directly under the central gov people's government. When we talk about Hong Kong being administered by patriots, what do we mean by patriots? How can you show your patriotism? Some people ask about that, and that is really very shallow. But this is something raised in 2014 by a radio station. I suggest them to read the basic law, to read about the interpretation of patriotic, which is that those who support Hong Kong's handover and uphold the principle of con one country systems will be considered as patriotic because it would not, not do anything to uh, damage the a sovereignty of your country. And what do you mean by uh, being patriotic to Hong Kong? Is it to support the development of Hong Kong? Those who damage Hong Kong or or try to smear Hong Kong will not be considered as uh, patriots. Uh, we haven't been working on uh, education on basic law, but today we really must be considered to maintain Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages. We see a um, free environment in Hong Kong. We adopt the common law in Hong Kong and is a capitalist uh, city. Therefore, when President Xi talked about maintaining Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages, we must comply with the basic law because the four must arose from the basic law. And to address people's concerns and difficulties and to create strong impetus for growth, to safeguard harmony and stability and improving its governance, also show uh, team spirit. Looking at the country's development, President Xi insists on 11 uh, commitments and persists to work for a better future. Uh, we, that yesterday, I, Mr. John Lee said that there would be an anti-chamber meeting once a month, which I believe is a very good suggestion. There are 90 members in LegCo. There are 15 bureaus. Even if we talk about uh, six legislative members working with each bureau, that would be uh, conducive to more exchanges and will be able to 
better work for Hong Kong's development. So this is my two pennies for thought. I saw submit, President. Mr. So Chang Wing. Thank you, Madam Deputy. In recent years, Hong Kong has faced a number of challenges. With the full support of the central government, we have moved from disarray into good governance. But how do we move from good governance to good or greater prosperity? I support the motion, uh, a German motion raised by Ms. Starry Lee. President C's address has um, provided us with a lot of uh, suggestions and advice. And today, we need to be confident of ourselves. We need to come up with effective methods to solve our problems in order to move forward. For a long time, Western countries, our politicians ha have ulterior motive, and they have been smearing Hong Kong, smearing the one country, two systems, and they have all sorts of misunderstanding, and they have worries about what will happen after 2047, and they are also about doubtful about Hong Kong's um, future, and that uh, affects the confidence in investing in Hong Kong. President Xi um, reiterated that one country system is a good system. There is no reason to change it, and we must adhere to it in the long run. So we are, have been given a shot in the arm, and the SAR government then is obliged to immediately organize itself and deploy the most effective means to publicize to the international community the real situation of Hong Kong. Now, given the complicated international uh, scenario, we must try to uh, do something to um, improve the image of Hong Kong. Now, and uh, investors uh, would look to whether Hong Kong will change in 25 years' time uh, to make decisions on their investment, and it will also af affect how families plan for the future. It will also affect how whether Hong Kong will have sustainable development in the future. So the government uh, must accord priority to uh, publicize the spirit of President Xi's speech to the international community. Secondly, uh, President Xi talked about four expectations, and in the second point, he said that we should create strong impetus for growth. Growth is key to Hong Kong's future because we must give full play to our existing advantages, and we should also foster growth factors. If Hong Kong just rests on its laurels and doesn't do anything to further grow, uh, well, uh, our neighboring regions are moving forward very fast. Our advantages will uh, disappear very soon if we do, don't um, work hard. And then there are deep-seated issues in Hong Kong. And these also must be addressed through uh, development of Hong Kong. We must expedite the planning and development for the northern metropolis. This is very pressing. And we must um, create new growth engines in order to resolve um, standing problems. Um, Hong Kong, the Hong Kong public would like to uh, lead a happy life. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, I now call upon the public officer to speak again, and then my, I will reply, and the debate will come to an end. The Chief Secretary for Administration. Madam Deputy, I thank Ms. Starley once again for moving the agenda in motion. 
to enable the current Tom government immediately upon taking office to put our heads together with council members in this chamber on how to implement the important address of President Xi Jinping on the 1st of July to create a better life for Hong Kong people and start a new chapter for Hong Kong. In the two-day debate of close to six hours in which over 60 members have spoken, members have shown profound understanding of President Xi Jinping's address. You have made a lot of uh, suggestions on how the government should govern and administer our society. Such healthy interaction dovetails with the chief executive's aspiration for strengthening executive legislative relationship and lay an important foundation for Hong Kong to start a new chapter in the next five years. I noticed that many members expressed concern about how to enhance the government's governance capacity and efficiency in policy implementation and have offered specific views on different policy areas. As well, the chief executive said in the Q&A session, the current term government puts emphasis on policy execution and adopts a result-oriented approach. The reorganization of the government structure and the creation of deputy secretaries of department posts aim exactly at enhancing our governance capacity and strengthening our coordination capability so as to improve the SAR's governance. The SAR government will seek to raise governance efficiency with the team members discharging their own duties while complementing each other's strengths, we will strive to meet President Xi's expectations and join hands to tackle the difficulties and challenges facing Hong Kong. We will make the best use of the next five years for Hong Kong to break new grounds and achieve another leap forward. The chief executive has directed that four task forces headed by secretaries of departments be set up, including the task force to lift underprivileged students out of intergenerational poverty led by myself, task force on coordination of land and housing supply led by the financial secretary, task force on district affairs coordination led by the deputy Sec chief secretary for administration, and task force on public housing projects led by the deputy financial secretary. They will be responsible for coordinating and guiding the work on these areas, highlighting the SRO government's resolve to address these long-standing and difficult problems. A number of members expressed concern on how Hong Kong can maintain its distinctive status and advantages. In his address, President Xi clearly stated that the central government fully supports Hong Kong in maintaining its distinctive status and edges in the long run, improving its presence as an international financial shipping and trading center, and keeping its business environment free open and regulated. To achieve this, the SAO government will vigorously launch promotion activities overseas and present a good narrative of Hong Kong to enhance Hong Kong's status and image. We will show the world a renewed Hong Kong, whereby Hong Kong has gone back to the right track under one country, two systems. It has integrated well into the country's development, has duly played its role as the participant of the country's domestic circulation and a facilitator in its international circulation. The 14th five-year plan sets out the important functions and position of Hong Kong in the nation's development, including supporting Hong Kong in enhancing its status as an international financial center, strengthening Hong Kong's position as a global offshore renminbi hub, and expanding the functions of Hong Kong as an international asset management center and risk management center. Efforts will be made to deepen the mutual access of the financial markets on the mainland and Hong Kong and take forward high quality development of the GBA. The SAO government will, in accordance with its unique position as laid down in the 14th five year plan and using the GBA as an entry point, discharge its function as a key link in the international circulation under the new dual circulation strategy. Specific Measures include fostering mutual access between the financial markets in Hong Kong and the mainland, strengthening our offshore renminbi business, developing Hong Kong into Asia's premier international asset and wealth management center, and advancing the development of the bond market. In shipping and logistics, we will continue with our efforts to develop and enhance Hong Kong's position as a high-value added maritime service center and core 
consolidate Hong Kong's role as an important regional logistics hub. Moreover, we will step up promoting Hong Kong's products and trade and services along the Belt and Road regions, particularly the ASEAN. We will take the opportunity of the opening of our 14th Economic and Trade Office in Dubai to forge closer economic and trade links with the Middle East region and strive to sign more free trade agreements and investment agreements. We will also step up efforts to attract enterprises in the Middle East to invest and set up their business in Hong Kong. The 14th five-year plan also specifies support for Hong Kong to develop into an international innovation and technology center. It also includes for the first time the Shenzhen Hong Kong Loop as a major platform for cooperation in the GBA. The GBA provides a better platform for Hong Kong to integrate into national development. We will actively take part in the development of the GBA International Innovation and Technology Center and leverage Hong Kong's strengths to address the country's needs under the international circulation and domestic circulation strategies. Many members have also shown concern on land and housing supply. Expediting land and housing development through improved efficiency and increased quantity is one of the four policies in the Chief Executive's election manifesto. The SEL government to adopt a multi-pronged approach to find land to accelerate housing supply and meet the public house, uh, housing demand. We will improve the relevant procedures and raise efficiency in land development and housing supply. The current term government will actively take forward the land Tao Tomorrow Vision and the various projects related to the Northern Metropolis Development Strategy to ensure the sustainable development of Hong Kong. A number of members also expressed their concern over youth development. President Xi also mentioned that we must give special love and care to young people. He advised us to guide young people to develop keen awareness of the trends in both China and the world and help them cultivate a sense of national pride and enhance their awareness of their status as masters of the country. We must also help young people in dealing with their difficulties in studies, employment, entrepreneurship and purchasing of housing and create more opportunities for their development and accomplishment. The new term government attaches importance to youth development and set up the Home Affairs and Youth Bureau to draw up policy targets for fostering healthy and diversified de development for young people and create more opportunities for upward mobility for them. In the uh, Q&A session yesterday, the chief executive also stressed that we must come up with an overall policy and blueprint for young people. We will consider the valuable views raised by members in this regard and improve our youth development policies on various fronts. Apart from lifting uh, underprivileged students out of intergenerational poverty and help young people move upwards socially, we will also strive to cultivate an affection for the country and a sense of national identity among young people and create a new generation of raising positive attitudes. Quality education is the key to nurturing talents. The government will continue to provide education resources and nurture local talents. We will also implement various programs to attract talents to come to Hong Kong to help with development of various sectors and create more quality jobs locally. The civil service is the backbone of the SR government, shouldering the important mission of implementing one country, two systems. Civil servants' performance is directly linked to governance efficiency. The SR government places emphasis on civil servants' training our top priority is to deepen civil servants' understanding towards the country's constitution, the SAR's basic law, and the Hong Kong national security law, and the country's development. The Civil Service College was inaugurated in December last year. It will establish a systematic training framework and strengthen civil servants' understanding of the SAR's constitutional order, national development, and national security. Fighting the epidemic is another issue to be tackled by the new-term government. The SR government will not lie flat. 
We will continue to accord priority to early detection, early isolation, and early treatment, as well as a strategy to reduce deaths, reduce severe cases, and reduce infections to safeguard Hong Kong people's lives and health. In implementing um, our anti-epidemic work, we'll take on board a number of factors and seek to strike a balance between managing risk and meeting public demands. We will adopt precise measures based on science and statistics to achieve the greatest effect with the least cost and minimize impact on normal activities. President, members. Since the reunification 25 years ago, Hong Kong's constitutional order, based on the country's constitution and the basic law, has advanced steadily. The central government's overall um, jurisdiction over Hong Kong has been well implemented, and a high degree of autonomy in the SAR has been exercised duly. The Hong Kong national security law was adopted, establishing a legal system to safeguard national security in the SAR, and the principle of Hong Kong administered by patriots is materialized after Hong Kong's electoral system has been approved. Hong Kong is at the starting point of moving from good governance to great uh, prosperity. The important address of President Xi on 1st of July carries great significance for Hong Kong. It affirms the successful practice of one country, two systems in the past 25 years and provides important pointers for the governance of the new term government. In the next five years, the SR government will seek to fully implement the four musts raised by the president and strive to meet the four expectations with our policy implementation. We will continue to join hands with the council to establish a rational executive legislature relationship so that Hong Kong can focus our efforts in addressing livelihood issues and meet uh, people's aspirations. Based on the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong and faithful implementation of one country, two systems, the chief executive will lead Hong Kong in pressing ahead on a new historic starting point. Thank you, President. I now call upon the Honorable Starry Lee to speak. President, first of all, I would like to thank 68 members who spoke at the uh, German debate on uh, the implementation of the address made by presidency on the four uh, must and four expectations. Members from different sectors have uh, put forward many suggestions on actions, plans, and the uh, Chief Secretary for Administration, Deputy Secretary for Chief Secretary for Administration, attended the meeting to listen to our views. So I hope very soon members' views will be turned into the action plans of the government. Here, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about the executive and legislature relations. Uh, after the improvement of the electoral system, every member of this council is a patriot. So the views we put forward are really uh, for the government to improve governance. So we target issues, not individuals. We want the government to we want to address the uh, issues of the public. And then the government also takes on board members' views to improve its governance. So um, the relationship is, has obviously been improved compared to the past. Mr. John Lee, the chief executive, arranged uh, uh, for the first um, question and answer session to take questions from members after his assumes office. He, he has asked uh, his principal officials to do more explanation about policies. And also at the chief a uh, question and answer session yesterday. He said that he would ask um, as secretaries of departments and directors of bureau to uh, uh, attend monthly anti-chamber exchange sessions with the government so there could be better understanding between uh, us and uh, the government. That's the right move, and uh, so that's a good start for this government. But then the executive-led approach is a fundamental system of Hong Kong. Now, after improving the electoral system, and so the, the executive less system is further consolidated. I hope the new government will build a new style of executive legislature relations and they will respect our constitutional duty. And then there will be more communication among different parties with the government. And then from um, policy um, consideration to formulation at different stages, this council should have the duty to be involved. So the executive and the legislature will play their respective roles, and then the, definitely the two will complement each other, work with each other, and have check and balance on each other. Now, the uh, uh, legislative council is an important constitutional element, so we have the duty to 
uh, help the government and the community to fully implement the address of President Xi Jinping. I'm sure all members of the council will bear in mind the four months and the four expectations put forward by President Xi Jinping. Under the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong, we will uh, dutifully perform the constitutional functions of the legislature. We will um, make sure that there is check and balance uh, on the government and also we will complement each other. And we will monitor the government in uh, its governance in accordance with the law and start in a new era of good governance. We will work together with the community to ensure uh, stability and harmony in the community. And we will consolidate Hong Kong's unique advantages and actively promote Hong Kong's uh, and actually promote Hong Kong's involvement in international development. I hope uh, different sectors will work with each other as well as um, uh, exercise and manage each other and we will address the pressing issues of the public. And then we could also address deep-seated conflicts and uh, together we could enhance the sense of uh, happiness of the people. If the country does well, then Hong Kong will do well too. Under the leadership of Mr. John Lee, the SO government will work together with this council and the community to start a new chapter for Hong Kong. As the period for the debate has expired, the motion will not be put to a vote in accordance with Rule 16, bracket 2A of the Rules of Procedure. This council now proceeds to other items on the agenda. Members' motion would